Bonjour tout le monde, ici Commander Fran. Alors comme certains me l'avaient demandé depuis longtemps et l'attendaient impatiemment, voici les 6 interviews que j'ai pu récolter à la British Uncon avec Brian Chambers, Tim Welsh, Board Gamer, Luc Presley, l'organisateur de la British Uncon et Chris Arrow. Et vous avez accès à différents sous-titres en plusieurs langues. Hi, um, I am with Chris, is the lead organizer, 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 organizer. <laughs> sorry for my English, uh, from the, um, the, of the B British Incon, and I have uh, some questions uh, to, to ask to him. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi. Um, about um, the organization, uh, what are your expectations of the British Incon this year? Um, so we, we're carrying on. We're, this, this is our fourth year, so we're, we're carrying on with the, the same idea of um, doing panels and um, we have some exhibitors here as well. So it's, it's just a case we're, we're building little by little every year on, on the main event. And um, the idea is just for everybody, a whole group of people to come and gather, uh, talk to each other, talk to the devs. and. Have a lot of fun, really. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Um, oh, this, this is the fourth edition, right? Um, how many visitors did you have last year, and uh, how do you think uh, what you have uh, this year? So um, we had about 200 last year. Um, we we did very well that year. Um, this year, not so many. Um, I think uh, a lot of people are expecting Citizen Con to be in. in UK this year, so they're sort of saving their money for that. Um, but we, we've still got a, a, a nice number of people, so yeah, it's good. Thank you. Um, this year, the Citizen Con is this in uh, Manchester. Um, is the Citizen Con team will be involved for the Citizen Con uh, in Manchester this year? Um, not as far as I'm aware. Nobody's asked me yet. Um, we, of course, will. Um, I plan on attending Citizen Con, um, but uh, obviously we don't know that much about it. Um, so we'll 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 see what happens when they they announce it, and um, we'll certainly go. We'll probably see if we can have a stand or something. I don't know. We'll 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 promote ourselves with T-shirts if if nothing else. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. And first, congratulations for the organization, and uh, I wish you a lot of success many years. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Uh, hi, again, Commander Fran. I am uh, with Luke Presley, is a lead designer uh, in the studio uh, Wislow. Yep. Yes. Um, I have a um, few, few questions for Luke. Um, thank you uh, first for, uh, for for the time. Um, If you can talk about it, what was the biggest project you worked and on and uh, that it not succeeded? Um, well, we started out with the uh, CryEngine and using Flowgraph as the visual um, uh, scripting language, right? So we made a whole load of missions, like bounty missions, the Tessa Bannister missions, the, there was a you know a security guard at Korea missions, all of that. All of that had to go. The moment we uh, like made our own, you know, we made sub the subsumption editor. So all of that does not exist anymore. And I guess you can like maybe read from that what we thought was worth bringing back. Uh, obviously, Tessa Banish is worth bringing back, but just not in the very linear progression that we had before. She should be a, a mission giver, and she should give you know uh, exciting kind of exploration or scanning missions. It's just that our exploration and scanning mechanics right now aren't aren't there yet. So there's no there's no point bringing her back just now. Thank you, thank you, Luke. Um, Something interesting, uh, when uh, when you meet fans of the game um, or fans of development, what are the, the two main questions uh, they ask you the most? Oh, well, I always get asked about ships, and I'm not the ship guy, <laughs> but, but they always ask. Um, um, I guess multi-crew ships is, is one of the things. When are we going to get more kind of gameplay um, where that allow people to, to work together? And, and I guess... That, that's the same for missions as well you know when when are we going to be able to share missions and that's really important it's important to Chris as well um, and it's something we're going to be looking into 
Thank you, thank you. And the last one, uh, maybe more personal. Um, if you could put a new original gameplay into the game, even something a little bit crazy uh, right now, what would it be? See, our game is going to have pretty much everything I want in it eventually. Like, I mean, really all you're asking me is which would I like first. <laughs> But um, I would really like um, to mess with gravity. You know, I'd like some, um, you know, places that you can walk upside down on walls, you know, you know, have some puzzles in there like that. I really, really want to be able to knock people out, you know, have some non-lethal combat. And I cannot wait to be able to, like, you know, like the sandworm that we showed, like have missions where you have to chase those or just missions where you're racing across a surface and those can pop up and grab you kind of thing. So it's all stuff that's planned. It's just, it's some way off, yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Luke, for uh, available for the interview. Uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Hi, here's Commandant Fran. Commandant Fran, you say, you say uh, in French, it's Commander Fran. Uh, we are in Manchester uh, from the Britain Corn, and uh, here is Brian Chamber. Hey. Hello, Brian. Thank you for uh, to be here. Uh, I would like to to have some questions about uh, Star Citizen and and your your work. Um, If you can talk uh, about it, what was the biggest project you worked on and uh, that did not succeed? Uh, for Star Citizen? Yes. Uh, nothing. Uh, as a company, we, we plan out what we're going to do. We set our eyes on it and we don't sacrifice. So we push and push and push. Um, if we haven't succeeded at something yet, we haven't given up on it. We just haven't found the right... You never forgive it. Absolutely. No, no. We, we don't. I mean, we, Chris set this game out. We have a vision. We have a goal. We know what we need to do. We got a team to pull it off. So, yeah, nothing. Thank you, Brian. Um, another question I have? Um, yes, I like it. Um, if you could put a new original gameplay into the game, uh, even something a little bit crazy right now, what would it be? Uh, uh, space whales, definitely. Yeah. yeah. For Jared. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For Jared. Do you hear that, Jared? Th well, thank you, Brian. Well. <laughs> okay. Um, what else? Um, yes. Uh, do you have some projects uh, you are working on Winslow and they are not um, developed in other studios? Uh, that would be more for, for Tim. Let's pull Tim in here right now. I, I primarily work out of the Frankfurt office. Yes. Um, I know about some of the Wimslow development, but you should have it uh, directly from the man himself. Tim is the, um, the director of the studios in Winslow. And uh, could you answer it to the question? Yeah, no, not really. I mean, the, our development is spread pretty much worldwide. So there's not, there may be a couple of people here and there, but generally our development is spread worldwide. So it's not really limited to Wimslow or, or Frankfurt or whatever. Yeah, it's generally worldwide, yeah. yeah. Studios are working on f small parts of everything, maybe? Yeah, to a degree, yeah, but they all interlock somewhere along the line with other other departments or other, other, other studios around the world, so, yeah. yeah. You'll have a little bit here and there that'll specialize. Um, I think at a Wimslow you have audio. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So yeah. we have proper audio, you guys have proper yeah. audio booths built yeah. out? Yeah, that'll be true, yeah. That's something with the screen. Oh. Um, Yeah, no, it's, <laughs> it's not me, it's not me. Um, audio, that's right, that's yeah, we, yeah, audio would be the one. We have, we have audio studios within the Wilms office, nowhere else around the world. So, yeah, there's generally most of the uh, audio work is done in Wilms, though, yeah. Ah, okay. okay, thank you, Tim. Um, one more question. Uh, when you meet, um, maybe for both, uh, when you meet fans uh, of the game, of development, uh, w what's the, the, the most often questions they are asking to you? I've worked here for six months, so this is you're probably this is my first event like this, so that I think that was probably one for Brian. Yeah. And you, Brian. I, I think everybody has the you know the one thing that the that's the most important. It's it's the ship they fell in love with and they bought. So when's this when's the ship going to be out, right? Or before it was when will the female player be in? You know, so I, I don't know if there's there's a specific one. You know, um, it, it's always they always want a date. <laughs> on when something that they can't wait to get in the game, when is it going to be in there? So, but, you know, we never really give them dates until it's out on the public roadmap and then we stick to it. Okay. Thank you very much, Brian and Tim, for, our, for, for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye. 
Hello, uh, again Commonwealth Fran, still at the British and Khan, and uh, we met Chris Arrow uh, from the Xi'an Workshop. Hello, hello. Hello, I'm Chris Arrow. <laughs> How are you? Uh, it's uh, begin to, uh, to begin the end of the day, not too tired? No, I'm not too uh, tired. I've I've painted very much. <laughs> yes, a lot of ink everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> um, I have some questions for the viewer here. Um, how did you come up with the idea of doing a um, Chian uh, workshop? Last year, b before um, before Con42, I had a, I had a, a ticket for a VIP ticket for Con42, but the uh, the organizer um, uh, contacted me on, on Twitter because he had um, to, to reduce one booth at one table free, f uh, and he asked if I wanted to to do um, to show my um, my Xi'an calligraphy skills to, uh, on my own booth, and that uh, okay, then I answered, and uh, then would I would have to to have. Um, calligraphy skills in the first place but then I I said okay we can we can uh, name it a workshop and then I, I um, started like one week before uh, Corn 42 I started I bought um, p um, brushes and everything and ink and tried to uh, just pr uh, practice to, to writing and yeah this one week was enough and I could uh, do Shia and calligraphy yeah. Thank you, Chris. Um, something else. Do you have some projects uh, about um, the Xi'an uh, workshop for the future? Um, and uh, which event will you participate this year? Okay. Um, I, I hope I can bring my Xi'an workshop to, to this year's CitizenCon. And maybe if the money and everything and uh, extravagant expenses allow, I will go to Periverse 2. Yeah. I don't know if there's a Con 42 this year, but I don't think so. But not, yeah. not in the same time. Yeah. So I, I, I think maybe I, um, as usually I, I will be at, at, at one or two bar citizens in Frankfurt or so. We even organize ourselves. And as always, I bring my iPad with me and I help uh, translate um, names to Xi'an or I explain the Xi'an language to everybody who's interested. And for the event, maybe the bar citizen of Liège next year, maybe in Belgium, why not? <laughs> maybe, yeah, maybe. <laughs> Um, last question. Um, in the Xi'an workshop, are you teaching the, this uh, Xi'an art to someone else? Here in the, sh in the workshop? Mm, no, usually. Generally. Yeah, okay. Uh, I'm a member of, of an org. It's called um, the UAE Xenolinguistic Institute. And in this, in this, it's basically it's a Discord server where we, where we can in, um, invite people and they, they, we have learning mater materials and resources. And we, uh, we have, for example, we have. Um, like tiny card decks um, for for learning the alphabet, or we have uh, memorized courses to learn the vocabulary, and generally uh, I'm, I have a, a big document where I, I collect every uh, Xi'an phrase um, known to me. So I, I have a big reference work where we, we can search the document. You can search phrases, and and generally, and um, we have we have Xi'an um, one on one. Um, uh, learning, learning uh, channels where you can just ask questions and, and I answer and help if I can and uh, I think usually I can. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there's also basically on our Discord server there's there's me and and, and Jail um, who are the, the Xi'an experts. They can help and yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. Uh, Chris Arrow is from Germany and uh, maybe I will see you uh, in CitizenCon or maybe Pariverse is easier for me, but uh, maybe. Yeah. Thank you very much, Chris. And um, it's my pleasure. And in, in Xi'an, this is Tepa Tiha. Tepa Tiha. I'm pleased that you are pleased. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Hi, still here at the CitizenCon. Um, I am with, I have the pleasure to, to see a board gamer. Hi. Hi, hello, I'm Board Gamer. <laughs> Thank you very much um, for the time for the interview. Uh, I have some questions for you. Um, you have 30 million views, uh, almost uh, 122,000 uh, uh, subscribers. And I saw your first um, Star Citizen video uh, was in early uh, 2014 with uh, 1.5 view. Could you tell, how do you have discovered Star Citizen? Uh, so, originally, sort of like Star Citizen was two sources for me. Um, I was playing lots of Diablo 3 at the time uh, with a couple of my mates, um, and uh, one of them, my mate Wes, had uh, bought a uh, Idris, and I was like, "What? Why? Why have you bought it? How much was that? A thousand dollars or something?" And I was like, I, c "I couldn't believe someone had spent that much money on a on a digital purchase." 
Um, and I'm incredibly thrifty as a person. I don't like spending money. I, I genuinely don't at all. Um, and then uh, another one of my mates, um, Chris, he was like, uh, who sort of like helped me come up with the idea of board gamer originally. Like, uh, you'll be okay doing YouTube. Don't worry about it. Let's, let's talk about it sort of thing. Um, he went, I quite like this game Star Citizen. It could be the next big thing. And that was like 2013. Um, and then I looked at it a bit more and I bought a ship. I think I bought an Avenger Titan or something or an Avenger Stalker at the time. Um, and then it sort of like grew from there. I started to go, actually, I quite like the idea of this. And no one else was doing content. And the content was then getting popular. Um, it was either, I was either going to do Star Citizen or VR. And I, it turned out that it was Star Citizen. And now is at the beginning. Um, I saw recently you produce one video almost every day. Uh, how do you find the energy? Uh, well, I'm not actually particularly high energy like YouTube or anything. Like, I'm incentivized to make videos because I directly get paid from people watching my views, my, my videos. So, uh, YouTube pay out based on views and time watched. So, I'm incentivized to make videos because of that. I really enjoy what I do. Like, I, I suffer from um, bipolar uh, and an anxiety condition. Um, and the, one of the ways I manage that is by working. I love, I love working. I love focusing on stuff. And the Star Citizen community is an absolutely fantastic social base to be able to talk to people uh, and like make friends and play games with. And I like focusing on that because I can sit down and go, well, I want to play a game. I'm actually going to make a video out of this now. Or I can talk about something that I've just found out in the news today. So I can build my hobby into to what I do as a job. And that's a fantastic thing. I love what I do. Thank you. Um, With uh, so many uh, subscribers and viewers, I suppose that you meet fans every, very often. Um, and when you meet fans, uh, what's the, the most, um, uh, the, two, the two main questions that they are asking to you? Uh, would you like a drink? <laughs> It's probably the biggest thing, which is always a yes. Uh, I don't really get any specific sort of like regularly asked questions from, from fans. It's always just like, oh, hi, do, do, you, oh, do you know who I am? Is actually who I, who I they ask because I like, they, they talk to me for a second and go, oh, do you know who I am? I was like, no. And it's typically people that say that are people I've never met before, but they've talked to me online or they've talked to me on stream. Um, I, I think the thing is, is that I, I love the fact that I do have a little bit of Star Citizen celebrity, but I'm very small. and. Uh, not, not just in stature, but, but like the, I, I think I'm proof that anyone can do Star Citizen content or anyone can become a, 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 a content creator if you work at it, if you look at it. I mean, you started as a hobby. Don't just quit your job and become one. See if it works for you. You might not, you might not be good. I mean, that's, that's, that's true. But everyone will have their own style. When I, I, I just, uh, you, might, you might think that, yeah, oh, my God, you've got this massive channel. It's small compared to some people's. I mean, look at, look at where everyone came from. Everyone came from the same zero sub counts. Uh, and, and then built their way up, and you get people with like millions and millions. You know, I mean, PewDiePie's almost what 100 million now. I mean, obviously a little bit of a exaggeration of YouTubers, but you, know, you, you get my point. Thank you. Uh, just last question: um, With Star Citizen, what's the other game that you like very much? Uh, so I don't really have any other specific games that I like, and what I mean by that is I play a lot of games all of the time. And I burn out on them very quickly. So I've just burnt out on Division 2. I've just burnt out on World War Z. Um, I still play a lot of Apex Legends um, uh, and stuff like that. I I'm only really into co-op games um, or games that have um, multiplayer, play with your friends sort of experiences. I'm fine with PvP experiences with that as well, but it has to be games I can play socially with my friends. Uh, and I think that's why I'm probably so excited with Star Citizen, because... I think it touches on so many different games that can be played in so many different ways that I can play with so many different groups of people. It, when I want to play different games, I just say, well, instead of doing mining, I'll do um, shipboarding or I'll do salvage or I'll do whatever else. It, there's so many things that a game touches on. I'm very excited. Thank you very much. Um, we were with Board Gamer and here Commander, Fr Commander Fran uh, from the British Uncon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated and uh, thank you for watching. And please uh, go to the um, uh, channel of Board Gamer and see the nice videos. And uh, oh. yes, come on. <laughs> subscribe. I don't know. What, I don't know what people say anymore. Like and subscribe. Yeah. Not yet. What? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Et voilà, c'était l'interview donc des six personnes que j'ai pu interroger, interviewer lors de la Britizen Con. Voilà, si ça vous a plu, n'hésitez pas à vous abonner. Euh, merci déjà pour vos encouragements pour la vidéo report sur la Britizen Con. 
Et voilà, n'hésitez pas à me suivre. N'oubliez pas, effectivement, que si vous voulez faire une petite donation, c'est possible pour vous motiver et sponsoriser les vidéos. N'oubliez pas le concours Ship to Win, deuxième partie. Et le dimanche, le streamer du dimanche avec des débats, des informations et des échanges sur des sujets variés de Star Citizen. Salut et à plus tard, ciao ciao